Welcome to ITU Telecom 2017 here in Busan, the Republic of Korea. And I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Adoni Lovetru, who is founder and CEO of Demiurge Technologies. Adoni, thank you very much for being with us in the studio today. Thank you very much. It's my great honor and a pleasure. I'd like to start off by talking about the theme of this year's event is smart digital transformation. What does that mean to you? Smart digital transformation means very important part to me and I think it should also be very important or critical for every citizen in the future smart city. Because in my point of view, smart digital transformation could provide the proper means to build the real smart city by creating sufficient free time for each citizen. And why I emphasize the free time to the smart city? Because in my point of view, the most critical and important value or asset for the smart city is the human. Because human is the most brilliant people. And, uh, and the most critical asset for each human have is time. But we basically have three kinds of time. One one category is we use for that biological consumption like sleeping and eating actually that is not productive considered to the relationship to the smart city and the second part is kind of the sunk cost of living like we need to drive kids to schools and uh, fetching goods and all those should time spent for the sun cost. And only the last part of the time is free time. It's where the brilliant people spend and generate prosperity. Like what we are discussing here, we uh, uh, inspire each other, we use our free time, not the biological consumption time and not the sun cost time. So that for me, the smart digital transformation can provide the proper means to create free time for each citizen in smart city. Now, something which is very much on people's minds is uh, AI. I wanted to ask you, how best should we uh, use AI to build smart and resilient city infrastructures? And uh, um, what are the possibilities, in your opinion, what are the challenges? Great question. And in my point of view, we should use or um, develop the kind of AI as a means to remove all the sun cost of time we consumed for daily life for each citizen. Now, what about Demiurge technology? Perhaps you could talk a little bit about your approach uh, mm -hmm. to, to smart cities that I believe is quite unique. Yeah, great. Love to talk that. So, towards the goal to minimize the sound cost of the time and create maximum free time, what kind of AI should we discover or develop should be the first question we ask. And uh, in my point of view, the AI behind AlphaGo is not suitable to achieve this goal. Obviously, the AlphaGo or the current uh, AI required big data. And actually, for all those tasks so in the, in the uh, daily life, atmosphere or environment, uh, we need a small data. And uh, so that we needed to come up with a different kind of AI, I name it physical AI, to, uh, to replace all those mundane tasks or relieve those mundane task burden from humans and uh, transfer to the digital transformation system. And how does that take place exactly? Good. Yes, and uh, actually there Mm. In the history of AI, there is very hard lesson to meet this goal because the founding fathers of artificial intelligence actually come with the same goal, how to let a machine be smart to help people. And uh, we see even today we can c develop a very brilliant uh, gameplay um, AI machines who can even beat human players. But don't remember, don't forget that it is a human who can discover rules and define rules by, uh, sorry, who can discover the philosophy rules and create games by those rules. And it is the current AI or the computers who following those rules and beat, uh, have a better play, uh, better play results. So in my point of view, the approach in the, from the history of the AI that is um, very famous and the most uh, truthful observation, which is the Moravic Paradox, which observes that actually the hard problems for humans are easy problems for machine and the easy problems for 
human uh, hard problems for machines. That means actually that in the past 60 years, we probably used a different or uh, not a proper approach to meet the original goal, to develop physical AI who can really relieve humans' free time. And that requires a different approach, which I see is discovery approach. Discovery how actually animal brains works because it is, is already tested and validated algorithmistic uh, algorithms to really do those mundane tasks in the physical world. Not only human, all animals exist in 56, uh, 5, 6 million years across uh, different species in 7.0 million species. All biological animals are so good at doing those mundane tasks, fetching goods, right, cleaning their nests. So only thing we need to do, come up with the physical AI next generation planning approach is to discover what the blueprint about animal brains and that is what Daniel to focus on and that required totally different um, talent skills the neuroscientists leading neuroscientists actually who are most familiar about how animal works and should be the next generation robotics great and uh, in terms of uh, the I mean, you're basically you're you're a tech startup. I wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts on the ideal private-public partnership model uh, with uh, city governments, for example, in smart city initiatives? Yes, yeah, very critical question. I think yeah. So first, uh, I want to see the different responsibility or function as a public and a private. Public define the goals or define the ends, and uh, private resources provide the means. So I think that for the public, it is important for public to hold the ends, never compromise. And for the private, we need to provide the we need to provide the truthfully gap between the current uh, techn uh, technological gap between the means to the goals or to the ends. And as a result, uh, as a private uh, pr uh, participants can always come up with better means to really achieve the goals. And as a public can, based on those truthful information, can relocate or allocate proper strategic resources and uh, make a right kind of policy to facilitate the means and to, share, uh, to pursue the shared common goal to really build a smart cities. Right. Now, I just wanted to ask you, you're attending this event here uh, in Busan in, uh, in South Korea. I just really wanted to find out from you, what's the value of attending events such as ITU Telecom World? Yeah, I think ITU Telecom is a very best platform to light uh, the blind spots and know where to hide. And because for the stakeholders, for the future smart cities, actually, the critical thing is that uh, to be free of blind spots. And uh, here, all the participants from different backgrounds and hold this uh, common visions, they can communicate freely. So this is the thing. And finally, do you have a key message for the event participants here in Busan? Yes. I'd like to remember everyone that human is the most brilliant creature on Earth. And we only need 10,000 hours to learn everything, no matter pupil or adult. However, 10 million hours would be not sufficient for the machine to learn, uh, learn driving autonomously. So, we want the next generation AI technology who can support humans to be brilliant and let, us, let our brilliance shine in Smart City. Well, some brilliant insights there. Thank you very much indeed. We look forward to seeing you shine in the future and uh, look forward to catching up with you again soon. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Very best.